or how does it work? Anybody here? Jan? I'm sorry, Shirta, I, I, I had to leave for a moment. Um, I'm okay. back. Yeah, no, I was just saying that's, uh, that's probably uh, it, what I wanted to show. Uh, so if there are any questions, uh, I can answer them. Otherwise, I can send you this uh, script and uh, you can share it. Or... Uh, yes, uh, yes, please send it to me. And also, um, yeah, send the file to me while I'm also going to edit the video so that it's split into, into the uh, separate tutorials. And uh, I will paste the, um, the I will send the file to the participants and maybe I will, ah, let's see, let's see what we do for, for uh, publishing uh, the file. But certainly uh, the participants are going to get the, get the file. All right. Okay, I see that Roman is already here. Um, Roman, are you ready to start your part of the tutorial? So no questions. I, I'm, 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 I apologize. Was, I apologize. First, first of all, questions about Chota. All good. All good. Thank you, Chota, very much. Um, I, I was following it. It was awesome. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'll send you the file. Thank you. Uh, bye bye. Uh, okay, Roman, uh, I need to make you uh, a co-host of, uh, of this uh, uh, meeting. Uh, meanwhile, maybe you can, you can make an introduction and um, I'll have to go to another computer. Okay, yeah. So, first I will need to share the screen, so I will try. All right. Okay, it seems that I cannot really share the screen now. Ah, okay, it's working now. So, okay, good. So probably you now can see my grasshopper. Uh, so this will be a short tutorial about the, um, uh, about the, um, uh, what actually artificial intelligence or maybe the machine learning can uh, offer us. So. This was like a short uh, workshop uh, on our course, uh, Digital Architecture. I don't know if you can really hear me. Probably everything is working. I will try to look also on the chat window that I can see what you are asking, probably. Okay, perfectly. So, uh, so, uh, as we mentioned in data lab, we are working with data and we are trying to process the data somehow and we are uh, trying to process uh, uh, the data and write raw data with uh, machine learning. So uh, we have also a small course, which is uh, a course which is uh, uh, teaching students the tools how to process the data and we, this semester we had the, the small, the, the brief, which was like about uh, reconstructing the uh, works from uh, Emil Belush, which, which is like really famous uh, modernist uh, architect here in Slovakia. Uh, and we were trying to uh, teach artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, to teach it uh, the, some patterns of his work and then to uh, recreate his work by, by this. So uh, the process, how we did it or how we wanted to do it, uh, was uh, quite simple that uh, we wanted first uh, uh, or the um, we were trying to uh, learn the artificial intelligence somehow the patterns which we can analyze from the building and then uh, let the machine learning to analyze the building for the form of the building itself and then to create the uh, the, the new forms or new uh, 
plans according to it. So uh, let's start first uh, with uh, how we did uh, the analysis. So uh, which is like uh, basic for machine learning. It is something which is giving you, uh, which is uh, if you give it the inputs and outputs, it will learn uh, the correlations in between them and uh, it will learn the patterns in between input and output uh, variables. So uh, by this means, uh, we were trying to learn it uh, some kind of uh, uh, analysis data that we analyze from the building and then the form of the building and basically on the new data. So if we uh, give the artificial, the, the, the machine learning, the new analysis, it will generate the new form according uh, what it uh, learned previously. So it's controlled machine learning. And uh, so uh, and our work was uh, quite uh, based uh, on uh, Patrick Schumacher semiology approach. So first we were trying to do this analy analysis of semiology uh, according to the building. And uh, for example, we were um, analyzing the program of the building and then uh, uh, let the machine learning to, to sample it some, somehow. And then uh, according to new uh, analysis, it will generate the new form. So first sto first part of the, of the workshop was uh, to uh, was to analyze the building and uh, with this analysis is so kind of uh, translated the building and uh, the, for example the floor plans or the the something from the building uh, it, we were working with floor plans then with the facet and also with uh, the third approach was about the, the the elements the formal elements in the space uh, so first was like translated somehow to vector fields or the, to the scalar fields, uh, similarly as uh, Patrick Schumacher was doing it. So uh, different spaces had different uh, uh, charges and these charges were then uh, uh, somehow affecting or uh, yeah, affecting the, the vector field. And then this vector field we were using as one input to the, to the machine learning. So uh, I think the first uh, part I can show you that uh, we will analyze the, which is the FOIA of uh, Faculty of Architecture, which is uh, uh, the entrance space of uh, Faculty of Architecture that uh, this space is quite uh, large and uh, it is also used for uh, exhibitions and uh, also for smaller, uh, small, um, activities like uh, some uh, like small uh, um, uh, for example the, the tickets are selling there then there are some kind of the students can work there uh, and it's quite like a multifunctional space so it also serves as a as a uh, as a corridor in between all of the spaces so uh, first of all we have like a really simplificated version of the OIA so I will just uh, hide this first. So the foyer is pretty simple. It's uh, you have like main uh, main entrance, then you have the two entrances by uh, from the other side, and then you can go to the to the wings of the of the buildings. So these uh, blue lines are actually the lines which are like uh, the paths for people. And then you have like two different spaces in uh, in this big space, which is like this private private spaces, which is Manjanta. And then you have the the red one. So this is quite like a, like analysis of a, of a paths and patterns how people will move uh, through this space. And this uh, will be like an input for our of machine learning. And uh, what will be the output? Because for machine learning, for control and machine learning, you you always need to have uh, some inputs, uh, which are this which is this analysis and then output, which should be the form of the FOI. And in this simplified uh, tutorial, we will uh, learn it that, that yeah, if, you, if we have uh, these kind of movements and uh, these spaces, then uh, the form of the, of the FOI will be created like this. So, oh, I will move the other again. So firstly, uh, we will start with the, I will just set it up here. This is the, we will start because for the for this, uh, we just move here. 
uh, we will first meet the, the points, uh, which will be uh, our points uh, as uh, kind of holder of our scalar fields and vector field, uh, which will be made from this analysis. The similarly, as uh, the semiologic analysis of Patrick Schumacher, uh, as he did this kind of like drawings that you have like every point of the space. In 2D has uh, its uh, value. So this is like a scalar or vector field if there is more dimensions. So first let's do the square, which is like uh, uh, some uh, grid of points. And then this grid of points will be size of two. And it will be enlarged, enlarged through the wall uh, area that we are analyzing. So, so this is our control points. Oh, let me just this very off. So we have like our uh, our control points, and these points will be like the holders or um, our holders of information. So uh, the next part is uh, uh, to write those uh, points, the the dimensions. Uh, how far away are uh, from our analysis uh, paths. So I will do just pull two points. So this uh, will tell us uh, how far away. So first I will do this just analysis of the paths. So, so this is like a path how people are going and we will write it to the scalar field. So I will just set, I will just uh, reference all of the blue lines here. So these are like the movements ac across the space and I will put it here. So we have like uh, uh, the closest uh, dimensions from every point uh, to, our, to our lines, but we need to flatten this, that we have just flattened points and then we have the geometries. And this we will graph. So we will have like every point and it's a uh, dimension to the, ah, so so this shouldn't be graphed. So we have like every point has this close, uh, closest di distance to the to one of the lines, or one of the curve. And this uh, we can visualize uh, similarly as uh, um, as uh, in this analysis. Uh, so we will create the vector, let's say, like to two points and we have like a, another point which is like the closest point to from every point so we can do like this and this will create uh, the vectors uh, which are like uh, the vectors in between uh, the how actually these points will move uh, if we if they want to meet the, the closest point on on those curves if we do just this way vector make the display and we will do the vectors and then the anchors that we see that the, all of the points are going uh, uh, nearby. I will just here, I will hide the, all of the spaces and also the foyer and this. So we have like all of the points are, uh, uh, has, uh, every point has a, has a vector uh, to the closest point on the curve. And we will, we will try to visualize it by lines. So uh, we will first uh, do line. We will need uh, what would we need is line, and uh, we will also need the second point. And we want to have this vector really small because we want to visualize it just in like really small lines that we also want to see them. So we will do unit unit vector like this so this vector is now like uh, the size of the vector is one of every of those vectors and uh, we will uh, multiply it we will multiply it by the distances but these distances we will remap so first we map by bounds so We have distances going here, and we want to remap it that way that uh, 
uh, the closest points has the, the biggest line and then which are the points which are much more far away from those curves has uh, uh, have much smaller lines. So this will be like from now all one. Oh, actually, the other way from one to four, from one to zero. So every point will be remapped other way. So if it's uh, uh, closer to the curve, it will be smaller available, and this we will. Uh, multiply by this and then we will do this multiplier also here because if we what we next to do want to do is uh, to create the next point which will go to our line visualization line so to this like is one point and then we then move it by by this vector by those this size so it will create another another points according to that and this we will put here, and we are seeing now that we have, if we write all of those, now we have like really small lines in uh, from all of the all of the points, and they are uh, oriented uh, to the to the closest to their closest points, uh, and we can also manage the, if they are bigger or smaller. So we have like this, for example. And this is like a visualization of this data that uh, actually every point, every point in this color field has this kind of uh, value, how, how far away is from those curves. And it is visualized by this vector or this line. So I can make it. And this is our for analysis. I will hide this because we will reconstruct it again. So, so we have like first analysis of the movements across the space and it is written to this scalar field and this scalar field we can also visualize differently for example by pixels or uh, the other tools in grasshopper so we can visualize it uh, with a simple display and with uh, uh, advanced simple advanced and uh, this we will set that we have here, if we click on X, then there is a square closed and then we have colors. Uh, so it's like a field and uh, to these colors, we will put uh, our distance. But first we need to remap, so we will remap them. Uh, we want to have like a black colors are the lines and then which is the points which will be much more far away will be wider. So by this way, we will do again the bounds. And then this day distance will go here and here and the target domain will be now from zero to one. That's because if it's uh, much closer, it will be black. If it's much more far away, it, it's white. And this we will write to the color. So we will do color uh, and we want color of RGB float. And uh, that's because the numbers here are representing the distance of those points to these, uh, uh, to these paths and this, uh, uh, numbers should be represented as colors. So we will put it from 0 to 0, uh, sorry, from 0 uh, to 1, from 0 to 1. And these uh, colors will be the colors of our symbols. So this we will put here. So it's a color of fill and color of edge. And this we will put uh, here. And then the points which should go here are these points. And now we see that we visualize this scalar field uh, uh, or these paths uh, uh, across the space. We visualize it by scalar field by colors. So this is actually how the space uh, behave or how we can analyze it. So these are like uh, data which we will then use for uh, machine learning. And this uh, data are stored here. So we have like remap numbers, which is just one number per each point, so it's like a scalar field. And uh, so this is like one part, which is like uh, one part that we need to analyze somehow the, the, uh, the space and we 
we will uh, find out how people behave there, or we will quite uh, try to analyze it in uh, some kind of smaller data. And then uh, we will try to also analyze uh, uh, because uh, we need to have like inputs, which are these ones, and then the outputs should be the form, the form of the building. So I will hide these, and now we will do um, that's where is the form and where is the form isn't. So this will be like outputs to our machine learning. So uh, so here we will do breadth in point in breadth. So we will ask. Uh, and we will now use also our foyer, which we model, which is prepared. So this is our foyer, which is modeled, and we will ask which point is uh, inside the form and which is not inside the form. So we will actually uh, write to this color field of the points. We will uh, write there if there is form or if it's if there is something or is uh, nothing there. So we will actually somehow voxelize it. Uh, so we will ask if there is the, and we need to load the, all of the breaks. So we will load all of those ones. And we need to find out for every of the breaks. So we will graph it and uh, we have the points which are going here. So this will tell us if uh, the point is inside the breath or it's outside the breath. And we have like uh, 11 breaths. So every breath has like 441 points uh, or answers if there is uh, the point inside or outside. And we want to have it like uh, by the point and not by the breath. So we will flip metrics. This will uh, flip our metrics. So if we look here, this is like a data set or data or one list or actually three, uh, but this is like one list for one prep. But we want to have like a one uh, list by one point. So we flip the matrix and then we have like a, every point has like a 12 uh, values if it is inside some one of the breaks or not. So we are seeing that point zero has uh, these kind of values and he is in seventh breath. And now, this we can simplify. So this now we we want to tune it to the to the numbers, so we can do mass addition. The mass addition will do that. Uh, it will turn the the values false or true if it's inside the geometry or outside of geometry to numbers, and it will count together. So we have like a, a zero and ones according to every point. And then this we can flatten. So we have now, if we visualize it uh, the same way as we did here, let's do it. So we have like uh, values zero and one for every point, And then we have like the, the points. So now we see that uh, here, we have like one scalar field, which is like, uh, the information if uh, the point is inside the bread or outside of bread, and it's white if it's uh, inside and black which is if it's outside. So these are the other data which will go to the to the machine learning, uh, and we will use artificial artificial neural network from uh, Mateusz Swierczki and. Uh, so this way we can. Uh, analyze also the other uh, properties of the space. So we have like the form of the space, which is the foyer, which is the, it's a 3D representation by, by columns and, and, uh, and uh, walls, which we translated to the, to the scala field, to the plan, plan view. Then we have the paths, uh, which we analyze the first. I will hide the piece now. So then we have the paths, and then we have the two different spaces, which are exhibition space and then private spaces. So first we will do the exhibition space, which is this uh, middle uh, round space in the middle. 
so the same way as previously we did, so we can copy this, copy paste, and this we will delete, which we can, and we will load here the another space from our analysis. So this now should visualize that in the middle is the space which is like uh, black, but this is the problem because uh, it is just counting the closest point. This curve is counting the closest uh, distance to this curve, but we also want the points which are inside of this curve uh, to be black. So we will drop you. Uh, we also want this part to be also black, so we will find those points and then we will uh, uh, replace them in the list. So um, we will do a curve in points, point in curve, this should be it. So we have the points, which are these points. And then we have curves. So it should give us the answer that if the point is inside or outside or it's uh, coincident. So, and this value, we are just interested in uh, if it's inside and outside because I think it is set it this way that uh, that every point is just outside or inside this curve which we are trying to, to solve. So these are outside and these are inside. So we will actually solve them like this. So we can remap this one. We will do just uh, the values from zero to one. So again, we will use bounds, which will create the domain of those values. And then we will create uh, zero to one domain. And uh, we will remap every value, which is two, will be now one and zero will remain zero. And then in this list, we will uh, find all uh, which are one, because if it's one, then it's inside of the, of our circle, of our space. So let's name the index, and uh, this we will set up like this. There should be, there are some ones and then zeros, and everything is flattened, so it's just pure list, and we will put this one here, and then we are finding the ones so we just write one and then this should give us the indexes where the one is actually stored in this list and now we will use replace replace items and uh, we will use uh, the data from here because this is our uh, this will say us uh, if there is how how far away is the point but but the points inside are white and we want them to black. So we will use this list and we will replace these values in these indexes, which are one with, uh, it should be zero, I think. And zero because uh, it will be black. So let's try this. This is like, Ah, I put it differently, it should be like this. Because here are indexes and here is what is replaced by, so so this is list and uh, yeah, now it's correct. And we will put this one here. So now these uh, replaced values will be visualized by our, uh, by our, in our Scala field. So now we are seeing that uh, also inside of those inside of this uh, circle, there is also black because this is like the wall space. And then we have like a gradient, which is uh, uh, saying us how far away is the point from this, from this, uh, from this space. So this is the another scalar field, which uh, are like store the data about the space. Now I will hide it and let's try to do the same with this one. So we have like, let's say two scalar field nouns. One is uh, 
the what you're saying uh, how are the paths in uh, like across the space and then the second scala field is uh, telling us uh, if uh, there is exhibition space or is not exhibition space I put it like this because now we see that every point has like uh, two values yeah so it's now it's like a not scalar field but it's vector field because we have like a two dimensions in every point and uh, now we will do the same way but with just those small spaces which are these magenta spaces here which are used for selling the tickets or making i don't know it's like more private space which is created by those colors here so so the same way, I will just copy and paste uh, this part of the script, which is uh, our next analysis of the space. And I will set uh, these curves. And uh, so this now, I don't know if it's working directly, but no, it's working just for, for those small space. And this another space is right inside because here we need to, I think we need to just graph it and then here if we graph it and then uh, we need to mass addition it here it's because uh, actually i will mass addition it afterwards because now we have like uh, for every curve we have uh, 441 answers that if it's the point is inside or outside and we want to have it like uh, for every curve. So we will also flip metrics because now it should be like for every point. So every point has like answer if it's for outside, uh, if it's inside or outside one of those curves, this will be put here. It's the same as we did with the preps. And now we are seeing that we have like 441 uh, values, uh, which are saying us if it's the point uh, inside of one of those curves or not. And then this we will put here. And now we see that uh, this color field is also black, also inside this uh, small space. So we have like uh, three analyses of the space. And uh, this we can also visualize by the means of a uh, uh, like uh, the same way as semiological uh, analysis. So we also make this one. And we have like three uh, analyses of the space and I will put it like this to visualize uh, that every point in the space now, uh, ah, this is, we need to move it here. So every point in the space uh, has like a three values and these three values have, uh, are saying uh, the the properties of the space, the how the space is uh, used, and uh, the wall space is uh, has also the uh, information if there is the some wall or column or if not if nothing is there. And this we will try to teach the machine learning uh, neural network. So uh, I'll go back here. And uh, now we will use the plugin, uh, which is uh, over plugin, which is really uh, useful plugin, uh, which is using the really uh, easy way how to use uh, machine learning grasshopper. So and we will use the construct uh, network. So it is working like this, that we have here the layers because it's multi-layer back propagation network. And uh, there goes then inputs and outputs. And according to this data, it will learn the patterns in between them, and then it will try to uh, to simulate or to create the the new outputs according to the new inputs. So we have the the layers, and here we will put uh, uh, the layers according to the data. But first, we need to somehow. Uh, at data together. So we have just the numbers. Artificial networks are working just with numbers and these numbers are usually with, uh, from zero to one. So uh, we will do merge. And uh, we will add there our input data. So our input data are our analysis of space. So it's this one. Then it is this one. 
and it's also this one. So it's like these three scalar fields, which are creating one vector field together uh, by three dimensions. So we have like, uh, but it is wrongly. So we need to also, uh, let's just uh, simplify and graph it because uh, two data in, these are data trees and they should be just uh, really simplified and drafted with every, uh, every list in this tree has just one value. And uh, then we have like this kind of data set, which is like uh, every point has three numbers. And this is like our that data set that will go to the, to the neural network. So we will do uh, the operation which is creating the tensor set. So this is like a tensor set from data tree. So now we see that it turns it to the it turns it to the tensors, and this will then can go here. And the same way we will do with outputs with output variable, which is our zero and one. If it's uh, formed there or it's form uh, missing there, or it's nothing there. So we will do the same way here. Uh, but this is much more simple because we have just one uh, one output data. So we will turn uh, uh, data tree to, to tensor set, but this we will graph because we need data tree. So every, maybe also simplify to be sure. We have like 441 uh, tensors and uh, this uh, will now go to the machine learning network. So, so we have like uh, tensors which uh, which has uh, which have just one value, which is like outputs, and then inputs which have like uh, three values per each point. So we have like this. Uh, uh, by this means, we also need to set up our artificial network. Artificial networks are working like that. That uh, uh, they are always like. Uh, few layers of networks and then the first la layer is uh, made of the inputs and then the output uh, layer is uh, the last layer of the, of the artificial network. So we will do the same way. We need to set up our network the way how we have the data. So if we have the tensors, which are inputs, which are the first ones, uh, they have like three numbers per each sample or each tensor. So we also need the input layer to have three, uh, three dimensions or three neurons. And we will do a really simple one, which is like uh, just four layered uh, uh, network. And we will multi line data. And uh, this is really simple to use because we will just do it like this. And now it's like the really easier, uh, really easy set to set up uh, the artificial network the big population. So this will go here. And uh, now uh, we also need to set up the alpha, which is activation function. And uh, also the seed. This part is more about like trying out because sometimes it's working, sometimes not. So it's like uh, you need to set up also the, the layers and also the, the activation function which is like here we are using sigmoid. Uh, we need to just try and out and uh, to see if it is learning the, the patterns or not. So uh, here we will use the alpha, which is uh, on point four, but this I just uh, tried by many, many, many tries by myself. So it is just changing and then learning and then computing and trying if it's learning or not to this we will also put here, which like inputs, and these should be like outputs. And now we will compute. Okay, this is okay. Compute. So this is our artificial network, which should be learned now because it has just 100 iterations. That means that uh, how many times this tensor sets are going to the network and how many times it is uh, actually learning. And also you can change the learning rate. So it is some kind of like a value which is uh, saying if it's learning good or bad, it's like a, yeah. So we will set this one uh, 0.25. 
and this uh, iteration we will set to really big number for now because it a really simple network with not so big data so we will put 100,000 with the iterations and then we will uh, put our inputs here and so we are actually now uh, training the network here it's saying that it's training and when it's trained then we uh, will uh, try to make the same outputs as, it, uh, as uh, we uh, feed it uh, previously so so it's the outputs here and here should be the same and this will tell us if the artificial network, neural network is learned uh, or it's not learned so this is like the output and this we will visualize by means of so this is tensor set so we need first uh, to turn it to data tree uh, so we need to go to all and then we have like tensor set to data tree and now it's just numbers and we can i think we can flatten it so we like just have the zeros and ones and this we will round So this will just tell us if there is the form or it's not the form there. And now we will do the box uh, with domain, let's say. And uh, the box will be created in these control points of our scalar field. So we have like this. And then uh, uh, the x dimension should be from minus one to one, I think. If remember correctly like this and then uh, this should be the same the x one yeah so we have like all of the boxes like fulfilled everything with the with these boxes voxels let's say but they should be higher so the z should be let's say equal to i don't know okay but it will be not so much Oh, it's too much. So let's say 30. So now like the whole space is fulfilled by boxes and then we will pull this list by this uh, output from our dictionary network. So now we will pull it. I just the pattern. So we will use this list and we will pull it by this means. So and this we will hide. And this is our output, which is kind of like uh, how artificial network is learned from those data. And we will also uh, visualize the different materials. So, custom view. Custom preview, this is it. And uh, let's say it will be white. So, we can see now that uh, I will hide everything else. So this is the, the previous form of the building. And uh, as it learns and then reconstructed it again from the data we gave, the, gave him, uh, it reconstructed it this way. So it's quite, uh, there are some glitches that this is like open, which wasn't there. Then these columns, he is not really uh, used to read properly. But uh, by many tries, and uh, if we put him more data to the inputs, he will uh be better to kind of recognize the, the data and and to uh offer better of better outputs so by this means now we have like a learned uh, artificial network and we will save it so let's say uh save network and it's asking for artificial network, which is trained, and then, then the path where we want to save it. So I will save it here. And uh, it should be, let's name it like uh, IN1. So now this is saved. 
and it said here so a1 and then now we can load it also so if we close grasshopper and then load it again it will be already uh, prepared and uh, trained to, to use in our uh, in our program so let's again load it so now it's loaded here and we will put it like this and now we will this we will disable and now we will try how it uh, actually learn the data so we will put in another uh, another input. So first, I will just hide uh, the stuff we do not really need. So this we do not really need, and then the points which are here we also do need. And uh, actually, I can put this one. Yeah. And this. So our input uh, is our analysis, and if we want to uh, create something new with it, we need uh, the new data, so something which we, we can control, and he will like add the resolution to it. So he will add the, how it should actually look. So if we change maybe the path here, so he is according to that uh, changing the, 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 the proportions or the, the space itself. So he actually learned that if we, uh, go through space he shouldn't give there the columns so if we put the path here he will remove all of the columns from there and uh, the same way should be the with this space which is so he also learned that uh, in the exhibition space there shouldn't be any any columns or walls so he will also remove all of them so now we are actually using the artificial neural network to create the new spaces uh, according to the new inputs. So, so these were like a really short uh, example how we can use it in, in 2D. Uh, so we have like input and output data, and then we will learn it, and then we can use it to create the new space. If you the same way we can also uh, uh, use it with uh, in 3D. So um, we will not have just uh, just uh, um, just scala field in 2D, but we can also have like scala field, which is like 3D scala field, and uh, it is uh, fulfilled by, by voxels on, or it could be also sampled space, and by this means we can create also different uh, different forms which are also 3D. This was like more like a video tutorial, and I have here uh, the examples from the workshop that we were doing. So first of all, we have like a, this was like a part of tutorial also, which was uh, learning the the network was learning the, the urban uh, uh, relationships of this building, which is like a building uh, uh, by Emil Bruch here in Brat Bratislava. And uh, so first part was like voxelize it and then uh, trying to reconstruct it, uh, learning and reconstruct it by, by artificial intelligence or the machine learning uh, network. So uh, uh, it was reconstructed by, by this means. So. It's quite uh, this kind of uh, uh, composition of the of the voxelized glitches and then the then the parts which are like uh, really resembling the building is quite quite interesting I think and then this is like a composition which was made from the from the other building which is like also learned uh, learned its uh, visual form which was just just simple box and then it was like recreated this kind of composition and then this was like a tryout uh, for why but the same thing was different the same thing wasn't like this uh, i showed you that uh, it was just voxelizing uh, the columns in 2d but it was in 3d and uh, there was the parts of the stairs and different stuff so it actually learned how to how to put it there but uh, sometimes not really in proper way and this kind of not proper way was quite interesting in this kind of approach and this was another approach um, by students uh, that they were trying to learn it uh, the functional uh, or the what are the functions in the building so they're like the entrance and we have like some kind of library and uh, and a uh, uh, lecture hall and uh, he was learning that uh, how these spaces should look like uh, and uh, how they should be uh, posi uh, positioned 
uh, or where should where where should they be, uh, and what should be their function? So this is quite like a reconstruction of uh, faculty of architecture of our school, and uh, according to new inputs, it was uh, creating the new compositions which were quite like similar to the what we, what we learned previously. So this is like some variations of it. And this one uh, was uh, another example which was uh, they used the same approach but uh, with uh, functions and then the, the elevations of the buildings. So we had like uh, four facets. facets. Uh, it was uh, learning the facets and then the functions inside. So according to the functions, the facet was reconstructed. And this is like, uh, like one of the outcomes uh, which was uh, recreated. And uh, that's it for now. So, if you have uh, any questions, if you want to ask. Thank you very them. much. That, that was awesome. Um, uh, is there, uh, I, I, I guess there will be questions. So, uh, people on Zoom, do you have any questions? So, we've got a thumbs up from uh, Iri, but I don't know if it means that he wants to ask something. Does he? No, I just want to say it was awesome. Great. We should invite you into Brno for a workshop. We need something like this. Okay. <laughs> Networking in real time. Yeah. And maybe the question could be, is it possible to make kind of iteration process that it will find the best of way, uh, like the path through the structure? Yeah, I was... Uh, you mean like uh, how to set up the, the artificial network or because uh, no, no i mean like you did now that you change the path according to these changes just let's say volume or structure it's reorganized so then maybe it could be also possible to optimize the path according to this you find a new structure and then yeah. maybe it could be very interesting also to analyze the structure. Yeah, it could be really interesting to uh, plug this one or actually the output, we, if we plug it back to the, for example, Galapagos and then he will uh, optimize that the, if we have path and then the form and what are the, this kind of like optimization in between the form and then the path that could be maybe made by means that the, how long is the path or how much volume of the space we want to achieve, let's say. This could be also interesting to kind of combine it with the uh, evolutionary solvers. Mm -hmm. Great. But also it is, it could be also interesting because this process of trying out uh, if it's learning or if it's not learning really well, uh, could be also interesting uh, to, uh, to make by Galapagos or other solvers that actually these values here as a uh, alpha value and also iterations and learning way will be changed by the by the Galapagos and uh, he will always like find iteration if it's le uh, learned better or or not so good. Mm -hmm. And then also the other uh, parts of research that you can you can also do that uh, first that this was creating the space according to the paths or some kind of functional uh, divisions of the space, but you can also do like first you can do just out of form, then which will be like one uh, neural network, then you can do the path, which is another neural network. So it will take the uh, outcomes from first neural network and it will use them for another another step. And this could be like layered, so you can have like more uh, artificial networks together, which are creating like really detailed uh, building. But uh, I, we didn't try it yet. We are now in the beginning. But I think like this one, this one was kind of like because he was. They were do, uh, doing it like this way that the, they first uh, gave them the outer plan or the outer form, which was generated by first artificial uh, network, and then the second one was actually uh, div dividing the space like into fractions. I think so. It is possible to layer those ones. Mm -hmm. Cool. Does anyone have any uh, other question? May I speak if it's possible? Sure, sure, absolutely. Um, well, frankly, 
It was just great. And I don't have actually a question. I need to digest what I saw first <laughs> because it was great. But I need to figure out to solve this problem. I, I mean, solve this, uh, this thing. But I guess it was amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.